Gasoline. Cubs spoke in Grand, La Grand Island about scenarios for the grain markets in 2013. As South America has dominated and probably will control the news cycle for soybeans over the next few months, corn is arguably quieter. We asked Elaine about volatility in those markets next year and about speculators in the energy sector. But after hearing Elaine's presentation, I asked if she was a bit more bearish going forward than most analysts seem to be. Well, I'm not bearish in the sense that I'm looking for prices to go down. I think we have established a floor below which farmers have locked their bin doors and they're not going to bring the grain to market. But to the degree that a lot of people are calling for new highs, no, I don't think that there's a justification for new highs yet because we have demonstrated that we destroy demand, that our customers and our customers' customers cannot afford to pay $8 or $8.50 for corn, for instance. So. What would have to happen for us to make new highs is something very strange with the dollar or a huge global recovery where our customers could pay that. But until either of those things happen, you know, I'm not looking for new highs. I'm very neutral. One of the scenarios you said in, in corn especially, you look at the three markets for corn, in exports, in ethanol, and then in the livestock industry. The livestock industry has cut numbers, ethanol industry is struggling, and the export market is sort of non-existent right now. Is there any growth in any of those that you could see where it kind of takes some of that percentage? That is a pretty good question. I mean, the ethanol industry certainly is in a position where it could start to make profits if, if energy comes up. And the same thing can be said for the export market, too, is you're just looking for a global recovery where the customer can pay more. That's the only way that we can really make these prices make sense. Soybean-wise, let's talk about Brazil. Let's talk about South America. Yeah. If Brazil would happen to come through with a large number of acres like we're expecting them to do, how volatile could that make soybean prices? Are we seeing a huge shift one way or the other here? Yeah, I mean, I think we're in a situation where the, the 2013 soybean prices have sort of been on a sideways path right now, but we will know within the next couple of months whether or not that crop has gotten a decent start or even an, an adequate or satisfactory start moisture-wise. And if that happens, yeah, I, I don't think that that market is going to stay sideways. It's going to go up or down, very closely dependent on what South America's weather behaves like. Has China positioned itself well? They're already well ahead on their exporting year, or their importing year, rather, yes. of soybeans. So does that make a difference? Yes, they have inventories built up. They are being very smart about that. So they are in a position where they don't have to pay anything more than what they do. If you look at the, the soybean prices at their futures exchange right now, it does make sense. I mean, the arbitrage makes sense. They're like $20 per bushel in U.S. dollar equivalents. But at this point, yeah, like you said, they're not, they don't need the new supplies yet. What's your, uh, what's your guess for acres next year as you look into 2013? because people are going to start to think about buying seed now before mm -hmm. we get to the end of year most likely. Informa says 97 and a half for corn, 80 for beans. That's a lot of acres. Is there any way that that proves true? There is a lot of acres and something that we saw last year that can happen again this fall is that we've got this nice dry fall and lots of time for people to right. work land, put new land into production. So it's certainly possible for us to be expanding our acre base for the row crop specifically and to perhaps lose some out of the cotton acres or peanut acres, things like that. Right. If that does happen, we mentioned before demand destruction. What happens if the U.S. does in fact plant that many acres of corn and soybeans? Is there a problem with how much production they're going to have? Well, there's a pro there might be a problem in storing all of it. We've built a lot of storage in the past few years because our yields have been going up, but we will certainly test the abilities of us to store 30 percent stocks to use ratio of corn. We're going to have a huge crop if we have normal weather and these projections for acreage and yield. Could see a lower price though, essentially. Absolutely. Yeah. Dramatically lower. <laughs> Let's talk about energy prices. You were mentioning before that the speculators have a a way to affect it here. Go on on that. Yeah, so between now and the end of the year, if you are a fund manager, you are going to need to be rebalancing your fund to make sure that you've got the correct weights of all the various commodities that you're into. And to the sense that you probably made a lot of money on your long soybean positions this year, now you're in a position where you're going to want to be selling those net long soybean positions that the funds are still holding. They might need to get rid of those in the next couple of months. And we certainly saw their willingness to get rid of them on, any, on a day when anybody's antsy about getting into cash, like the day when the stock market was closed because of the hur hurricane. Right. So anything like that can certainly scare these funds, these speculative investors out of these markets. Which drags everything down then? Well, it dra drags it down on certainly a day-to-day -day basis in the futures price, but like we've mentioned, the farmers are not going to sell if the prices go down, so that means that the basis might certainly strengthen to sort of even out the cash price offered to farmers. The volatility in 2013, do you expect it to be as ranging as it was in 2012? It's obviously a question that depends a lot on weather in South weather. America. Yes, exactly. But going going into 2013 for these old crop prices, I mean, again, I think nothing might change for what we know about the supply we have and the fact that customers are not be able to pay very much. So we might have a pretty tame couple of months for old crop prices.